Here's what we do. You can hear just the vocals. You want it all, but you can't have it. Here it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can hear just the drums. Just the guitars. Yeah. All right. And five, four, studio, deluxe, bales. Yeah, get it close. Seven more. Two, four, five, six, seven. I had that planned out from earlier. <laughs> Welcome, Welcome to beautiful Van Nuys City. Who? Van Nuys City. Okay. <laughs> First of all, we are fucking deep. Now, we are, are we deep, deep enough for you now? Do we're not deep enough. Here. Deep. Uh, okay. Why can't I just enjoy you the that. fucking show title? <laughs> <laughs> We're at Studio Deluxe. Yep. Like I said in beautiful Van Nuys City. There's a great <laughs> example of a human being right here on the couch. Look at him. Hey, look Matt at Wallace. Hey. Woo, he's, yeah. he's beautiful. And he let us come in here and talk to you guys, you little fing ungrateful fers. <laughs> <laughs> and coincidentally, yes. to my forward. Yes. The 14th most enigmatic <laughs> YouTube host <gasps> in Clearwater, Florida. That's me. Oh. Ronnie D. Hello. Woo. Woo. Incredible. And Southeastern treasure. <laughs> Lemon Jello up there. Yeah. What? Southeastern treasure. Feeling like a treasure, yeah. You know what? We traveled 3,000 miles. Yes, we did. Cause a Willie Bear. Willie Bear. Willie Bear. Oh, come on. Dreams come true, kids. Be true to yourself. Be happy. Tell them over there. Dreams come true. Be happy. But not you guys in this camera. Yeah, fuck that. No, you're ne it's never going to work for you. <laughs> All right, Lamontolo. Yeah. Before you push the button, we need a slight explanation as we are here with Matt Wallace doing tracks that he recorded, produced, oh. and mixed. And so this is going to be a little bit of a uh, exploration. Yeah, an exploration. Are we are we in over our heads? No. Oh. oh. All right, let's push the button. Launch the sequence. Launch the sequence. <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo. Yes. Remember that part being right there. in this song right here. We got it. It's here on Woo. the screen. Woo. A lot of tracks here. And yeah, as a reminder, be. before we get going, the drums are in red. The bass is in yellow. The guitars are in blue. The keyboards are this beautiful color. Willie Bells, what would you say that color is? I'm going to call that San Fran Bunker Brown. Okay. okay. San Fran Bunker Brown good, good, and good. the vocals. Right. The money. The vocals are in purple. Let's hear this thing. Okay. Damn it. Oh, 
my goodness. What instrument? They're all such a good basket of yummy, aggressive, freaking <laughs> fuck you. I love them. I want to go with this bass guitar. <laughs> I, I, I got to hear this thing. Choice, all right. Choice. We will start in context, and then we will solo up the bass guitar. Ah. I mean, it, it's just, it's already just... I mean, this is like Darth Vader's jam. Yeah, yeah? it is. You can hear the drum bleed. Yeah. So it was a mic thing? Yeah, it's mic. Cool. A combo? Or a, a, like a like a, just uh, a head a and a pad. That, that's well so it's like it's either a Gibson grabber bass that's got a broken part of it, or it's an Aria Pro bass into a PV solid state guitar amp. Right. Probably like a, a bend at 35 or something like that. Maybe a mace, a big and, mace or something. And then and then to a nice size cabinet, but it was in a hallway. Uh, in the sound lock between the control room and the studio, but it was a, it was a it had a lot of tile in it, cool. and so I had the, I had a mic on it that I moved out a little bit. Then we also had the direct the DI, but it was really a lot of that's the mic because you can hear it's got oh, that. Oh, that's it's that's got some ambient. Them. That's yeah. yeah. Let's move in air, man. Is the PV doing the dirt part? Yes. Okay. The, cool. that, the, he he cranked the guitar amp up a bit, yeah. and so you got the bass, and also the way he plays very aggressive with a pick. Yeah. yeah. And it's so it had all just this amp thing. drive. Yeah. Amp driven. Right. And if, you, and if you listen to this bass. He plays the same damn part yeah. through the whole song, yeah, he does. except for the bridge. Yep. So even yep. when they go to the chorus, he's still bump, bump. Yep. Not afraid to pocket. Dun, dun, dun. It's and about get the, the song. You know? yeah. It's not about, oh, let, watch me. Let, yeah, yeah. Watch the shit I'm going to play. No, it's about the song. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. hey, cheers. Hey, cheers. Oh, cheers. Let's cheers, cheers you, it up you, in here. You, Yay. Beautiful, you beautiful dog cheers. faces. You have my favorite dog face. Thank you. <laughs> ah. All right, we're going to get back up on this bass right here. Uh, are you all right? So, 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 this song is pretty interesting in that, first of all, it got to, I think, number eight or number nine on the charts. Yeah. But if you listen to it, it all kind of makes sense, but there's that middle instrumental section. Yeah. There's 45 seconds that of a guitar. That, that, that radio tolerated. It's of unbelievable. A, of not just how the, strong that track was. Not just the guitar soloing, the bass is soloing, yep, yep. and so are the drums. Yeah. Who does that in a pop song? The the real fact of the matter, and something I've been searching for, the Holy Grail, yeah. Bill Gould, the bass player, actually did all this stuff on a four track. Uh, he did kind of a sketchy drum thing, but he had the bass, he had the guitar, and even... The piano at the outro, yeah. he had on, on a four track. He yeah. actually had it. As much as I love to take credit for like being the Svengali, yeah. it was him. Nice pre-pro. Yeah, very much a good pre-pro. And then we kind of built around it. So he was cool. he was the guy. He's like the wow. engine in the band. He was like, okay, here's I got this idea for a song, for this song. You uh -huh. bring something like that, yeah. it's worth That's, dude, it was a thousand crazy. practices if you yeah. can just bring something right. like, for everyone to listen to. Wow, yeah. The whole great. vision was like, yeah. was like, oh my God. Uh, I just had to try not to ruin it. Yeah. Sketch your ideas out. That's right. Sketch them out before you go. Hey, I got this thing. I'm had a dream about. Yeah. And I'll tell right. you what. In the studio, if you go to the studio and you want to search and search and search because you didn't pre prepare, we're charging you by the That's hour. Right. That's hey, right. Hey, hey, hey. Let's keep on hey, searching. Hey, hey, hey. That's right. Yeah. All right. Let's find this base. All right. Oh. Right. So consistent. Yeah. Uh, it's like a loop. Yeah. yeah. Basically. The shortest note length possible. Know, yeah. 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 That is awesome. Yeah, All right. We're reminded of this thing. Let's get up on the drums. Yeah. Because, man, yeah. it's going on there. All right, drums. Let's see what you got, yo. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on with that. And a lot of really good room sound. Yeah. If you salt the room track, you'll hear it. Oh, let's hear this. <laughs> yes! Like, like a 
Oh, yes. Damn. <laughs> Is that how he played it? That loose yes. of a flam? Yes. So the Mike, Borden, oh, the Mike Borden, the Mike Borden signature was always like a loose flam, and he okay. did that for a lot of songs. And he even did that sometimes on the way he'd hit the toms, but mainly it's always the snare was a flam because it just cool. sounded bigger. Yeah. yeah. I want to hear the I, I think the room might be blended into the overheads. I'm not sure. So how was the uh, room mic'd up? Do you remember? I think I had a couple of 414, something like that, just cool. in the room, an yeah. Omni. Yeah. You know. I love the 414s. All right, so here's just the room drums. <laughs> rock room. That room rocks. Yeah. I want to hear how much that affects the sound. The muted. Oh, come on. Wow. Isn't that cool? Yes. How is that the room mic? That sounds amazing. That nice? And that's when we worked there. I wanted to work there for this. Yeah. I had it so high. Yeah. Awesome, man. And if you listen oh, closely, he hits rim tom-toms. Yeah. If you really listen, it's yeah. it's like tick tick dun, dun. and there's these little tick. He does this kind of weird polyrhythmic thing. Yeah. He studied like African percussion. Oh, really? And, yeah. Yeah. Kind of in there. Yeah. Well, that yeah. was what if was freaking listen, me out. Like a little tick tick yeah. was the tom. So yeah. let's just go through the tom tracks. You'll definitely hear it on the overheads though, or the that room you can hear a little bit. But there's a. Like, <laughs> Hey, nice. yes. How's that reverb for you? Nice. And that's an overdub or that's live? No, that's all live. That's just that's just cleaned up. So good. So beautiful. Pom toms especially. Can you feel it? See it? Keep it today. Huge. Yes. Now, as an experiment, I want to turn the room on and off to just hear the difference. Okay. Can you feel it? See it? Hear it today. If you can't, then it doesn't matter. Room off. Way, you will never understand it. Cause wow. it happens to pass. And it feels so good. It's like walking the glass. It's so good. So hip, it's a Fuck yeah. It's so wow. Good. Yeah. yeah. yeah that the, room, room. the room is really important. Yeah. Real important. It makes no difference. Cause it's not too much to be the Wow. That's so cool, and like, and real room, not yeah. no bullshit reverb no. trying to do it. That's the real deal. Yeah, yeah, a real room. That's that room is really important. It's got that that setting yeah. racquetball court. Three. Yes, yes, <laughs> exactly, nice. exactly. So cool. All right, let's do anatomy of a groove and hear how tight the bass and drums are, because that was something that I always marveled at. Yeah. And they played it that tight. You're yes. telling me? Yeah. Yeah. No, those guys were locked in together. That was. Yeah. They were like one one musician <laughs> stuck together. Take a listen. <laughs> Wow. It don't get tighter. Oh, yeah, that's super tight. Da -da 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 -da. And I yeah. love the flam. I good? know, man. The Oh. And this is all way before, obviously, you can time anything, put it in time. Yeah. But the one thing I think I mentioned earlier is that it's, there are 28 razor blade edits on the drum performance. So if in the analog days, if you had a late snare, I could cut away what we called air. So if you have the kick here and the snare and the snare should be here, yeah. you would cut a little tiny sliver of tape up two inch, two inch off, and you can bring the snare up just a little closer. Now, if the snare was early, you couldn't make it later. But yeah. a late snare, you could make earlier. A little sliver edit. You would kind yeah. of cut a little bit and listen back and go, ah, still a little late. You'd cut another tiny sliver. Wow. But when you cut that sliver, you're not just taking out the snare drum. You're taking out 24 tracks. Yeah. Right? But it's a little tiny piece that's on the two inch, and you just take it out. You put it in, they go, Of oh. time. Of time. It's, yeah. quant it's yeah. fucking quantum yeah. physics. It's, it's, it's quantum physics. No visual. You know? right? yeah, yeah, all, yeah, so by ear, so what you do is you would rock it ag yeah. across the head. I've seen it. And you, yeah, yeah. And you find out. <gasps> and you, yeah, and you yeah. find out. And you, yeah, you yeah. find out. And then you mark where the, 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 the downbeat is, of the kick or the snare. And you go, okay, and so you mark S, snare, and then you go back. You go, okay, that one's late. And you cut right in front of the snare. Wow. And you cut a little bit of time in front of it. Oops. Pull it out. However it late together, it was. And you and but it really becomes kind of an artistic feel that you kind of go, ah, that feels like about you know, maybe like an eighth of an inch. Well, that one's like a quarter of an inch. 
And then you put it together, you go, all right. So Are you happy for the digital editing? <laughs> do you miss cutting the tapes? The, the best thing about Pro Tools is the fact that you can do non-destructive digital editing, which is really great. But I, the thing I have against Pro Tools and all kind of multi, you know, 200 channel plus recording is that people are, don't have to be as prepared. Right, yeah. And you can record 200 tracks of, of nothing. Oh, yeah. You know, but but when you're prepared, it's like, dude, it's got to be here. And I, and I, I did some uh, Queen mixes. I listened to some Zeppelin stuff where you can you can hear like, no, they, they, they recorded it live. Yeah. Right? Right. The drums, the bass, and the mm -hmm. vocal, and the guitar, it's live. Right. And you get this feel. And so yeah. when you're recording sometimes, you get these things what we call happy accents. Yep. You do something, you go, dude, do that again. Okay, yeah. So next course, yeah. we're going to do that thing. Yeah. It's called and what? Happy accident. Happy yeah. accident. Because yeah. you do something, you do something, and you go, fuck, dude, I wasn't even yeah. thinking about doing right. that. Let's and, do that again. And let That's me, psychic. let's shine a light on that. Yeah. Extrapolate that. Extrapolate. The more it does for us, the less we tend to do. Yes. And getting together and building a song and connecting yes. is something that we all need to do in all yeah. aspects yes. of our like lives. Start, but man. the more it does for you, it seems, here's our pattern I'm noticing, the less we do, yeah. the less prepared we do. So it's not making us better no. unless we make it make us better. <gasps> Wait a minute. Can I take that again? It's not making you any better until you make you no. And for me, the 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 better the technology has gotten, yeah. the less accomplished the musicians. Big time. And for me, the 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 better the technology has gotten, yeah. the less accomplished the musicians. Big time. Big time. Yeah, we'll Dude. just hit the quantize button, drummer. It's crazy. Yes, I get and it. And I've had I've had like session guys come in. Play a drum pass and go, you got enough for Pro Tools? Like, no. Right. I want a performance. Like, give yeah. me a take. Yeah, give me a take so I don't have to cut that shit yeah. together. Yeah. And, and to me, it's just like, you know, you just no, no need for pesky chops anymore. All right, let's start this thing at the top and then break it down to just those guitars. Woo. Crazy guitar. You know it. Save it. Oh, look out. Ooh. Now we're fast forwarding to the next entrance for the guitar. Yep. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Let, letting the physics of the stack do the work. Man. And that. It's like, so something interesting about this is, it, is this song and also uh, for both this song and we did a cover of War Pigs. There was so much hiss from the guitar yeah. in between when he would play. Yeah. And I had to learn how to do this thing, which is a fucking risky ass thing. It's called spot erasing. Yeah. So as soon as the guitar would end, I, I would, you know, dead patch or anything, I would just hit record and I go, oh, oh shit, his guitar's coming. It's I come coming. out, I try to record. But then you go back and you'd mark where the guitars are. And you, what you could do is you could go like this and hit record and slowly just go right up to where the, the guitars then come out and record. <laughs> no way. So that that's what, insane. So that's why it sounds so, when the guitar comes in, it's like there's no shh. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had to do that on the on the Man. 24 track. Bravo, I never track. even heard of that. that, 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 that How thankless is this sculptor, Yes. and all of you, what I mean, in this time, that had, yeah, to, yeah. had to do these, Heart emotional roller coaster. I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna <laughs> erase it. You know, it's like all oh, these dude. like yeah. don't do that ever. You guys had to do it. We had to do it. Great. Let's hear some guitars with the manufactured silence to make the guitars even more. There it is. Oh. Listen to this. And so there's no sound. Yeah. <laughs> dude, that, that was the most nerve wracking part. Oh. What? There's a lick. Hootie, hootie, hootie. All right, that's the spot. One more time. Yeah. Is that for performances? Harmonies. Oh, are you kidding me? Dude. One more time. Awesome. Iconic yeah. moment. Wall oh freaking.
<laughs> <laughs> Go, vocal comes in. Oh, yeah. oh man, dude. <laughs> Holy shit balls. Makes me want to play guitar. I know, it makes me want to have a jam. All right, so now we're getting on to them keyboard tracks. What was the color on those things? <laughs> San Francisco. No, no, that, that was the dirty the, rice. What? Oh yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, rice aroni. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Bunker Brown. Bunker Brown. Bunker Brown. That's Bunker right. Brown. Like Duda Brown. <laughs> See if you can recognize where this keyboard part of the intro was borrowed from. What movie soundtrack? Okay. Wait, what? Really? What? <laughs> Now it sounded it's familiar. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It definitely is that. Right. 2001, 2001 Space, Space Odyssey. Odyssey. Yeah. So, so imagine you got 2001 Space Odyssey with this rap metal stuff. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Did it. It oh, is. A, it's almost like it the last note, too. Bad. Dude, it I is, did not it, realize that like until just now. Like while the guitar was there, was there you yeah. know, but that, yeah, yeah, that was, yeah. It's exactly that. It is. Yeah, cool. The song it was obviously there's no lyric in here that says the word epic. Yeah. But when this music was put together before Patton put the lyrics on it, they just we just felt it was like an epic song. Yeah. Say it again. Epic. What's the name of it? Epic. <laughs> <laughs> And, and uh, the, all this music for this album was written before Patton joined the band. So oh, actually, really? oh yeah, yeah. So the music was written and we're getting ready to go to record and Patton has just joined the band. And and so he had to write lyrics for all these songs and all the melodies in two weeks. What? And so he had to write lyrics for all these songs and all the melodies in two weeks. You he, write it to this and that's and it. And he wrote 19 year old kid, all lyrics, all melody. Wow, fucking good, good on him. And he was been of a, he was being able to work with a rough of this and yeah, but, headphones but, at home. Uh, or, but no, I think this just in the studio. No, no, I think he had like a rehearsal recording to start putting stuff together because he had to be somewhat prepared before I actually went in the studio. So, so was he not in the band when they got their deal? Like, all right, we're no, we're no, they had Chuck Mosey, a different singer. Yeah, the first singer. No. The first singer did the first record on Slash Records called "Introduce Yourself." Yeah. Then the band split, parted ways with Chuck. And then they worked on all this music, and I was working with them. They were in LA. There's just the four guys and me working on ideas. Yeah. We were in this like shitty, shitty place at Western and like Hollywood. No exaggeration. It was like this this old, decrepit building. Yeah. And you know, guys, how old, you know, like bats of fiberglass are yeah. like? That was on the walls. It was during summer oh, in Los Angeles. And all we had was this. And someone had put like garbage bags to kind of cover the Ooh, insulation. Yeah. And we're in there, re you know, rehearsing, just like Getting itching itchy, and yeah. just like. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so then they put together this, these rough mixes and then, I mean, recordings, like basically demos. And then we got Patton involved. In wow. Mike Patton, the vocalist of Faith No More, is a genius. Yes. Super talented. Yeah. A exceptional range. Like, yes. I think it's like a five octave range. He's oh, ridiculous. Holy. All right, here we go. Up on the vocals. Solo that stuff up. You ain't never heard it like them. Well, the bell's telling in your camera. You ain't never heard it like them. Mm -hmm. Can you feel it? See it? Hear it today? If you can't, then it doesn't matter anyway. You will never understand it because it happens too fast. And it feels so good. It's like walking on glass. It's wow. So oh, cool, man. So hip, it's all right. It's so groovy. It's out of sight. You can touch it. Smell it. Taste it so sweet. But it makes no so difference. So in your face. You yeah. It's like <laughs> it's, out, it's out of the speaker. About four inches beyond the speaker yep. in the air. Well, so obviously it's primarily Mike Patton, but my in my uh, lack of abilities as an engineer producer guy, I had this thing called a DBX 166, oh, yeah. which was yeah. either a stereo compressor or a dual mono. Yeah. Okay. And I took Pat's voice, it had a 414 through the nice. console into one side of it, and I set it at two to one as a compressor. Yep. Out of that into the other side, at a 10 to 1 as a limiter. Oh, nice. Yeah. Now, if that wasn't enough compression, yeah. <laughs> in the mix, I took the output of his track into the same compressor, out into the compressor back. So his voice, is, by the time the mix was done, four times. Four times to the same year. And the bus compression and yeah. mastering and radio. Well, that that's why it's like... It's just like... 
Awesome. It's beautiful. So there's a lot in there. Yeah. One more time. Can you feel it? See it? Hear it Double. today? If you can't, then it doesn't matter anyway. You will never understand it because it happens too fast. And it feels so good. It's like walking the glass. That it's one. so cool. It's so hip. It's all right. It's so groovy. It's out of sight. You can touch it. Smell it. Taste it so sweet. But it makes no difference because it knocks you off your feet. <laughs> Thank you for not erasing the breasts. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. check this out. I got to ask you about this. Yes. There is a little overdub in there. Walk in the glass. Oh, my God. The sound on that thing. It's but so this thing, what is this? Walk in the glass. Play that again. <laughs> Walk in the glass. Yeah, so I think there, there's a little bit of the room on there. Yeah, so all of a sudden it kind of opens up a bit. Nice. On his butt. Walk in the glass. Yeah. So, so how, did, how do you make those decisions? Like you have his close mic and then you have the room mic. Like, so when do you go, all right, well, what needs to happen here is like we've out that's of the a, room that's mic. That's a good or? question. And for some reason, I, I, when I did the original mix, I, I thought there was a doubled voiceover because I was kind of bringing things in here and there, yeah. which I can't find on this session. Uh, yeah. But for me, it was just a matter of, I like the idea of doing the rap thing, but I felt like because it's relatively monotonic, yeah. I wanted some kind of sonic things to change to keep your ear tuned in. Yeah. So it was just the same sound, like, you know, whatever, but it's, right. like, it's like kind of close, and then all of a sudden it gets like a little bit of room there, yeah. and then sometimes it gets a little bit of distortion, so it was just yeah. an idea where I just kind of like, well, let's see what happens. Walk in the glass. All right, we're going to continue on with these vocals right here because it's about to go down. Catches. You want it all, but you can have it. Wow. One more time on that thing. You want it all, but you can have it. One more time. Holy crap. Teen just wrote it. Wrote it for this. You want it all, but you can have it. He's a, he sculpts his voice into different yes. sounds. He's, <laughs> he's putting... He's adding a lot of characters at me. Can he sing other ways? Yes. Yeah, so here's the frustration making the record. We he'd do that. You want yeah. it all? And then when we'd stop, he'd go. You want it all? He had this beautiful, robust yeah, voice. Yeah, right, right. And he'd kind of do the Sunday's R and B cruise. So I go, dude, let's get that on the record. He's like, no, I don't want to do that. Like, like what the fuck? He and I argued around and around and around about this because he tone. actually. Yeah, because he could have done everything yeah. Chris Cornell did. He could right. have done all that and then Masada. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Good. And and so there's two things that I think were at, at the factors that were happening here. One is he created that sound because I believe, and he's never confirmed this, he was still kind of uh, loyal to Mr. Bungle. And so yeah. in here, he created a, a bit of a persona. Yeah. Uh, and so this is kind of a snotty, you know, sophomore kind of like me, you know, kind of like that attitude. I agree. It drove me crazy, but he was absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> because the it was vibe, a the faith, the more vocal. But it's the vibe, because yeah. yeah. then young kids, yeah. like fuck yeah, yeah. that yeah. vibe, and he yeah. did that. And what's also another thing interesting when when the tape wasn't rolling, he could just go, "You yeah. want it?" Hit the notes, but here he goes, "You want it?" All. Yeah, it's brilliant. And what that does is that gives you a sense of tension and release. Yeah. And yes, it does. And it's it's he was absolutely right. It makes yeah. you lean absolutely into right. it. Yes. You yes. know. He was absolutely right. And I was I was I was high on crack, man. I, <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. So beautiful. Well, check it out. Yeah. Watch this. Yeah. Watch this. You want it all, but you can have it. Here it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. But, but another thing that's interesting about about this is when you listen to that melody, you want yeah. it all, oh, but you can't have it. That's a really complex yes, melody. Whereas a lot of modern yeah, stuff yeah, goes yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah. They, it says like na 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 yeah. na. It's the same note with a different rhythm. He had this like expanded Your melody yeah. on top thing. of this like. <laughs> You know, guitars, and yeah. he was, he's a fucking smart guy. Man. That is a ballsy thing to sing over top of just that one guitar note. And then you sure. sing that. Next level melody for That's sure. Mike Patton genius. But it's the attitude and the vocal. Yeah. It sounds like a snotty kid. Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hips crying, 
kidding. A lying on the floor. So you lay down on it and you do it some more. Yeah. You got oh. to share it. So you tear it then you bear it and you tear it. You. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. One more time, Mike Patton. Give it to me. In it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's crying. Bleeding, a lying on the floor, so you lay down on it and you do it some more. You got to share it, so you tear it, then you bear it, and you tear it. You. <laughs> so the stuff that gets doubled, whose idea was that? Uh, that was I, I'm not sure. I think it was me because I did want things to kind of poke out. Yeah, yeah. And and but I didn't want it to be always doubled. But everyone saw it. Right, 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 right. Certain stick words, words just certain phrases. Yeah, yeah. Again, just to keep your just to keep your interest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What was that? Well, it's, it's, because if it's always doubled, it gets to be a clump. But if yeah. it's like singular, then all of a sudden doubled, it, it gets this thing and comes. Yeah, yeah. Thing and comes yeah. 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 And you're anti clump. Yes, very yes. much anti. -clump. No clump. No yeah. clumping. Okay. No clumping. Like, you know, when I hear your mixes, <laughs> think there's no clump here. I try. I try not to clump, but sometimes <laughs> unintentional clumping I happens. Clump. <laughs> we all try not. But that brings a very good point. One of the things that I did starting with. Faith the more on, on previous records is I would always allow them to just record as much stuff as they wanted to. It's like, dude, just throw it up there. Who cares? Yeah. And the the thing I brought to it, uh, along with doing the recording, I would also do very, very subtractive mixing. So they would do all this stuff. I go, well, that's great, but we're not going to hear the keyboards on this part. Yeah. We're going to hear the guitar. Sculpting. Oh, and so I do, all this stuff was, and so what happens is everything just sucks down, and then it's just drums and bass. Oh, Here's the guitars, yeah. and and so a lot of very very subtractive mixing. Yeah. It's very important. So was anybody that was, pissed off about getting their shit muted? No, because I started working them so early. Okay. Uh, on the We Care a Lot album, I did a lot of that kind of same stuff where they had all the stuff going on. It would just yeah. and I actually helped build. You built it. So now we're getting up to the next part. We're going to go back to the bass and drums, which because they are not afraid to let a groove happen, it's pretty much the same thing. So, Yeah, it just hits, it just punches you in the mouth all the time. Constantly. It's just a, You're like, yeah, yeah. that groove is just so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Whoa. Whoa, what was that? On oh, the keyboards. Yeah. Oh, Verse three. Cool. Yeah. Won't get that. Yeah, that's broken glass. I don't think I've ever heard that before. That's cool. Incredible. Amazing. This track is blowing my mind. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in here you don't realize, like this little bass accent guy right here. Let's hear this thing. Oh. Overdub realm. Oh. Nice. Oh. Nice. Oh. Nice. Oh. Nice. That's a good realm. Yeah. <laughs> that is one of the real all time rares of all time. <gasps> So let's go grab that keyboard little... Yeah, so verse three, he puts in a broken glass thing on the snare hits. You know, if you solo it, what? it's like a... You'll hear it, it's like a splatter. I don't think it's on the keyboard track. It's on the... Oh! Oh! So, <laughs> so check this out. We have this keyboard sound in the back here. Then, then you hear, there's like a diddle zoom. There's like a yeah. diddle zoom, and then a clang. And then a clang, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, see, let's see if you can hear it in context now. Once you hear it like we hear it, you'll never hear it the same way again, because now you know what's in there. Yeah, uh, Matt, you've definitely ruined the song for me. I can't ever right. do it again. <laughs> but wait till we get to the guitar solo stuff, which oh, you may, may not hear. Got the solo. Because, Look out. because he orchestrates that. Jim really, he plays like three or four different parts. Oh, it's And beautiful. it's 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 like a symphony. And you're like, it is beautiful. It's really something. It's really impressive. All right, well, we're going to scroll on down. Here they come. 
<laughs> this, is, this is crazy. Just solo the guitars and listen to that middle section. It's a it's an orchestra. It's seriously a symphony. Here we go. <laughs> Single side. Yes. Triplets. Four different parts, and he's got things that are ascending, descending. Yeah, no, it's all, it never stops oh, moving yeah. and amoeboing into yeah. this minor bliss. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. all Jim. Jim wrote this whole thing, and he, it's, yeah. it was, it's so impressive, man. Yeah. We did. One more time on Dreamscape. the Dreamscape. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, t yeah. It's crazy. Yes, 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 yes. Here we go. Wanna hold out of love? Here we go. Woo! And the hair starts. It starts getting more psycho every day. Iron Maiden. Beautiful, like minor third thing is that. And then if you miss it, wow. Go to the Astro, see that same pump of guitars there? Yes. Go there. Okay. And you'll so, see at the outro, he does a similar but different thing. So did, so he, did he come in with this or did he craft it here? You know, uh, I mean? he, he already had it in his brain. Wow. He had already worked out the parts, yeah. So, so we're moving ahead Ooh. to the outro and see what he does here. Yeah, so Oh, oh! Like a bottom arpeggio kind of happening to it. Woo! What a great piece. What's happening? Do we have the automation on the master? Yeah, he automated his own fade. And it is epic. But the thing it is, is they're not always parallel harmonies, but he's got one going up and another going down. A it couple was a more brilliant counterpoint. Yes. That he wrote, and he would've got an A plus on his counterpoint test in school. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you solo up just the, because you know, we have the rhythm guitar going, but if you just listen to just the, the counterpoint guitar track. Yes. Oh, it's like, oh, oh, oh. please take this step right here. Mix a Lydian ripping shit through there. Ah. Octave. It's very European too. Like the uh, Vikings. No, yeah, it is very much it's like that. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of scorpions. Yeah. Feeling. Really. 
He's good at that fast vibrato, too. Oh, the wailing of the high one, you know. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's got such pain. Yeah. And so then here's the, the solo part. Woo! Drip. Yeah, he's like, oh, yeah. yeah. It's like 300. Right, we're going to move these people off the cliff right Yeah, now. right into the hole. Yeah. yeah. yeah you got to go. Yes. <laughs> so, so then, but if you add this in, which is the bass, so then the bass player goes, well, you know, I'll play a little different part now, too. So he's going to get out of that groove. So he's soloing. Oh, yeah, he totally. Like, hardcore, too. Like, he's all over it. Da 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 He's changing the that subtleness of that line. What the t- And then the and then the <laughs> outro he does the bass does a different thing. Oh, lament! It's weeping. It's so somber. It's, 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 it's sad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A dirge. Dark storm right. on the horizon. Yeah. It's Romeo and Juliet, man. That's awesome. So the other thing yeah. goes to the piano. Yeah. This one, this is going to the piano. I'll, I'll let you take over. Then the piano. Oh, oh my what? god, dude. That is amazing. Yes. <laughs> and so this is the point where if you've never heard, are you guys familiar with the good, the bad, the ugly theme? Yes. Okay. So that theme, as I was saying earlier, when we started doing guitars after the drums and the bass were recorded, Jim brought in the cassette of the good, the bad, the ugly by Ennio Morricone. And we listened to that song like as loud as the speakers would go. And... <laughs> And there's no real correlation between that song and Epic, except they both are very grand, panoramic, cinematic, like, right. what the hell? So we would listen to that, like, and we'd salute the speakers, and at the end we'd face each other, we'd salute each other, and then we'd start recording the guitars. And that kind of weird ritual... It was the code, It man. was the code. That was it. And so, and so everything we did aspired to Ennio Morricone... Good, the bad thing. We wanted that kind of sense of grandeur. And that yeah, was part yeah. of the the magic that came together for this was it had the snotty kid with the attitude, the cool lyrics, the rap, the rock, the, the orchestra symbols. And, and there was this underlying brainwashing of a feeling. You felt this thing from it. Exactly. What is it? Some what is it? Yeah, what is it? You know, it's, but, <laughs> but that's exactly, and I think that's what makes great songs. Yes are multiple layers. And like, you can listen to a song on a Friday night where you're gonna go party, and you're like, woohoo! And you can hear the same song on a Monday after you broke it up with someone and go, oh my goodness, you know? Yeah. And, and it's all there in the song. And that the great songs, all there. what the listener brings to the song is what makes it yeah. special. This is, like you say, it's got all these levels. Like, it's up, it's snotty, but it's also dark. I mean, yeah. it's, do you know where that phrase, it's it, comes from? No. Well, I, I'm, Pretty sure this is what Pat was thinking about because in San Francisco, there's a frozen dessert treat that is a cookie, uh, vanilla ice cream and a cookie with chocolate covering. It's called an It's It. No. And so I don't know if that triggered this or what it was, but that It's It. What is It? What so is I'm, It? It's a frozen it's dessert. The iconic vocal what? moment. Here we go. What is yeah, yeah, It? Yeah, yeah. It's It. What is It? It's It. What is It? That's it! 
What is it? That's it! Woo! Come on! So we have these gang vocals down here. I don't know that we're hearing it. That's it! What is it? That's it! Let me see. I guess we're not, but so the gang vocals are interesting because Les Claypool and a couple of the other guys from Primus. What? I'd, I'd, well, I had worked oh, with them. Come on! <laughs> okay, so I had worked with Primus, the very first recording of a song called uh, Tommy the Cat. What? That's I, you! I love that. Well, the, the original version came out on a, on a KUSF compilation. It's a, it's a college station compilation. The one I have is a very different vibe than okay. what they end up being doing. Mine's like heavier, it's slower, it's heavier. Anyway, so if you solo up these gang guys, that's Les Claypool, I think Larry and uh, Herb or whatever. And no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is in the room, and the same room where you get the drum sound, and you might be able to hear a little bit of the, the, the room sound. Maybe, wow. maybe, I may have cleaned it up. Okay. Solo vocals, the members of Primus we have just discovered. <laughs> Thank you, because you know why we know this is true. Yeah, I think he was there. He was there. I, I was there, <laughs> and, and I was, I was, I was sober. So there you Listen go. Right, this. He remembers. It. It's it. Whoa! It's it. Is it a gated reverb? Uh, I think. It's it. Yeah, I think I, I think I had a noise gate on because it's, it's it. because it's just so much room, and I wanted it to be. Uh, yeah, and I'm. And at one point, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. But anyway, so that's, and then Bill Gould in the back. I mean, pretty much everyone in the band was there yelling, and then the guys from Primus. One more time. It's it! It's it! Woo! It's it! It's it! So it was, uh, it was made inactive, but is it on the actual song? I don't think it is. Will, Will was saying he doesn't think it was. Like, so I, I guess he must have gotten rid of it for some reason. Let's I, hear I it in context. It. Let's hear it in context. It's it! I'll have to listen back to the original. I maybe feel like something of that is there. It must be in there. Yeah. So maybe we. Maybe it's in the room. It. Yeah. Yeah. Well, however cool. it's pulled together, it sounds incredible. And congratulations. Thanks. So we've gone through this whole song, and we are now at the famous. Piano outro. Mm -hmm. so the let's outro. Get that there should be two tracks. And it's two performances. Oh, I love that chord right there. It's evil. Like a horror movie or something. It's the same vibe that everyone's on. It's the the, the what have we won for? What's it, what was it all for? Exactly. Thing, you know? yeah. And it might be like I I I might be getting silly here. Uh oh. Uh, hopefully. Oh yeah. We can only hope. It's the passing of your youth. Mm -hmm. It's the battle you've won, but mm -hmm. why? Now I'm an adult now, yeah. and all that fucking chaos and cool is. It's time to go adulting now. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. We've made it. Congratulations. Yeah, okay. dun, dun, dun. We completed Bye. the race. I gotta go to the I gotta go to the real world now. Catch you guys later. Remember yeah. when we were freaks? What? And the end was like. <laughs> so that outro. Uh, so first of all, the outro was in Bill's original four-track demo. And I think most of the, most of the piano stuff was. Uh, maybe not all of it. I really? think it was just. I think one side of it. I think so. Wow. One side of it. The top one is Bill Gould. On the Emacs, which is a sampled piano, yeah, and yes, it's very, yeah. it's like plink, yeah. plink. It's a kind of like Linus. And then the other side is a real piano with Roddy, who's a real pianist. I was, I was gonna say one sounds like a toy piano, almost the way it's painted. Yeah, so if you listen, but so even in context of this whole song, you got like a caveman on the clang. We like yeah. caveman. And then and then you got this like elegant thing oh, on the other too. side, and what? the two are kind of like. It's the whole. It's, it's the whole thing. Yes. So check it out. This is what he's explaining. That's it. This top track so this is, is the bass player's demo. Yeah. And this bottom track is the actual piano player's right. track. Yes. So exactly. cool. So, so let's solo, just hear the demo. Yeah. First. Listen to the demo piano, and it's just like. And he's hitting flans. Yeah. What a horrible, wonderful eight-bit sample. Yes. Thing. And here's the actual piano tracks. Ah. 
But how they flam and it's kind of wonky and the sounds are different is really gives it a more eerie thing. It does because they're 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 contrasting. Yeah. Wow. Oh my God. dreamscape! Wow. I just have to say it again. It's like something that would be playing during a memory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and the and the live piano gets more elegant and more complicated as it keeps going. Yeah. Would be a piece on its own. Exactly. A vocal could come in on a lounge. Yeah, it yeah. just could be like. And then, of course, the very end where he has that last piano. Yeah. Yeah. You can hear like Leonard Cohen laying on a vocal over this or something. The magic note. I'm surprised someone hasn't tried to do something with just this section and like a thong rap song or something. Yeah. yeah. I've done that on my dashboard of my car yes. so many times. Yes. I've done that last no, yeah. uh, in traffic. I'm like, let me end this. Yeah. Yes, but, yes. And it's just, it's, it, yeah, it's pretty crazy, man. They were super It's talented. like a movie. Yeah. yeah. Gone like with the wind right. ending or something. It, it, it won like three and a half minute song. Yeah. Yes. Right, right. And that made it into the top 10. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's shocking. MTV was involved in the editing of the video. And they said, if we can be part of editing, nice. we promise we will play it. Of course, they put their hand on it. That works. Push it. But right. they were part of it, and they did this, you know, if you remember this thing called 120 Minutes, yeah. Sunday nights, they played Epic twice. Yeah, but and they sat on it for six months. They that was my jam, again. that show. What? But so they only played it twice, yeah. then it went in the, on the shelf. What? The band toured back to England, back and forth. They had such a groundswell that eventually they had to start playing it. We have what's called the Caveman Out. Die. Where, oh, yeah, we just okay. play the song out and we just kind of remix it as we go. Okay. It's your song. Could you caveman us out? I'm gonna try. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. now if I, if I, caveman out. Yeah. Rhythm. Uh, okay. All right, well, here we go. So are we, hey. is, Epic. is Willie Mac. Is Willie Bell's gonna be on the on the board too, or are you just gonna be coaching? No, I'm just, just gonna you. Be like, <laughs> we I'm ain't that crazy. You know, so you can look, work under pressure, like. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, I'll do my darnest, man. I don't know. I'm much better on an analog console, but let's see what I can. Custom think. caveman morseling. <laughs>
<laughs> so awesome. <laughs> I took out the, the master fade. I forgot that it wasn't there anymore. No, that's cool. You never heard it like this? I never heard it like that. Demon side of the music. Dark. Woo! Matt Damn. Wallace. Woo! Studio Woo. Deluxe. Woo! <laughs> Thank you very much. Awesome. I forgot to the last minute. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, that was beautiful. Good job, good job. That was fucking cool. Thank you. Oh, shit. Sweet dick. I will yeah. stick. God, God, if there's a God, it'll stick, you know, it, everywhere I go, Minnesota. Sweet dick. Because I'm a spaz. Dude, what the fuck? Oh, my God. In the video, was that actually your goldfish at the end? Because yes, it was. That was Sammy. Damn it! <laughs> oh, Sammy. That said, what is it? That said, what is it? That said, what is it? It's just wow, man. That is live. Thank you for your patience. That's nice. I'm driving a race car driver's car as like a fucking grandma. <laughs> I talk like a DJ sometimes. Stop it. <laughs> Super cool. <man. laughs>